Hello, everyone. My name is John DeLynn. I am uh, just super excited to make a quick announcement uh, through all the different channels uh, that we have here on Mormon Stories Podcast on social media. Um, I am announcing that we have finally completed uh, what I think is an epic uh, interview series uh, in partnership with Radio Free Mormon, um, 13 hours of discussions and interviews with Dr. Robert Rittner, a profession of Egyptology at the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago. Um, in this epic series, uh, Dr. Rittner provides us with the following. First of all, uh, the episode series is called Dr. Robert Rittner, an expert Egyptologist translates uh, the Book of Abraham. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion in past years, um, past decades, uh, past century um, about the Book of Abraham is it a valid translation? Uh, did Joseph Smith get it right? Is it a fraud, etc.? cetera? Um, <clears throat> and for a long, long time, Egyptologists have uh, been able to weigh in here and there, but never have we had an Egyptologist uh, weigh in heavily and deeply uh, to, uh, to address and to answer the question of, you know, did Joseph Smith get the translation of the Book of Abraham right from the papyri, or was it a fraud? So uh, I am so thrilled that Radio Free Mormon and I together spent over 13 hours with Dr. Robert Rittner of the University of Chicago. And we cover several things. We cover the history of the Book of Abraham Papyrus. Uh, we cover an analysis um, of Joseph Smith's explanations and translations of facsimiles one and three. You've seen those facsimiles, of course, in your standard works. Um, Dr. Rittner provides an actual translation of the facsimiles, all three of them, to tell us what they actually say, and we compare that to what Joseph Smith said they say. Um, Dr. Rittner provides a deep analysis of what's called the Abraham Egyptian Papers, which were these uh, papers that Joseph used and describes in the translation of the Book of, Book of Abraham that the Mormon Church hid for over 150 years from its members, and it wasn't released until the, the Tanners embarrassed the church and forced the church to release them right before the Book of Abraham Papyra were rediscovered uh, around 1966. Um, so we're going to discuss the Abraham Egyptian papers and how they demonstrate conclusively uh, that Joseph Smith and his scribes uh, were attempting to actually translate um, the papyrus from character uh, to, to full paragraphs. And Dr. Rittner goes into that in detail. Um, Probably the most uh, important and volatile part of our 13-hour interview with Dr. Rittner is an extensive discussion on the disingenuous and or unprofessional uh, Book of Abraham apologetics that have been employed over the years um, by LDS Church apologists like Hugh Nibley, like Dr. John Gee, like Dr. Kerry Mulstein and others. Uh, the church has been incredibly dishonest uh, in how it's used these, these gentlemen, and these gentlemen themselves have engaged in shoddy, unprofessional, and disingenuous uh, apologetics, uh, including terrible ad hominem uh, apologetics attacking Dr. Rittner himself. And they should be ashamed of what they've done. And uh, Dr. Rittner is now standing up to them and calling them out for frankly embarrassing, uh, you know, the, the the academic profession of Egyptology with their apologetics. Um, finally, we are super grateful to have both Dr. Rittner and Radio Free Mormon do an analysis of the catalyst theory for the Book of Abraham, which is the new territory that neo-apologists like Terrell Givens, like Richard Bushman, like Patrick Mason, um, like Spencer Fluman have retreated to. So as the Book of Abraham can no longer uh, in any way be considered a credible translation, um, now folks like uh, Mason and Fluman and Bushman and Givens and others want to claim that the Book of Abraham isn't a translation. Instead, it's a revelation. And they want to uh, sort of claim that even though Joseph thought he was translating with God, even though God said he was translating, even though Joseph said it was the papyrus and they did the grammar and they, they got all the paperwork showing that they were going from character to to the text of the Book of Abraham, now neo-apologists want to claim that really the, the papyrus was just an inspiration. It was just a catalyst for the revelation that Joseph Smith received. 
and we're very fortunate that Dr. Rittner and Radio Free Mormon decimate um, that claim and show uh, how faulty and um, uh, non-credible it is and how that really amounts to gaslighting um, of, of Mormon church members, uh, which is not good. So uh, we want to let you know that the link to uh, this new series has been released on mormonstories.org. Um, the link to it is in this post. Uh, you can also access it through Radio Free Mormons podcast. The only thing I want to add is that we've included visuals um, throughout this this 13 hour presentation up on YouTube. So uh, and we will be releasing it soon on Facebook as well. But what it allows you to do is look at facsimile one as Dr. Uh, Rittner describes and translates it. Look at facsimile two, look at facsimile three, look at the Abraham Egyptian papers, see real photos from real hieroglyphics, from temple walls, uh, from real scrolls. And it really drives home that one, it enables a better ability to follow what Dr. Rittner and RFM discuss. It, it deepens and enriches your understanding. Um, and it just makes for a multi-sensory experience that is really worthwhile. So. Check it out in any medium you want, but I'm just going to let you know that you'll get the most out of it if you check it out in video. Finally, it's super important that we all mention that Dr. Rittner is facing kidney failure and is in need of a living donor to secure his life and continued research. So if any of you are able, we would love you to please contact Dana McLean, Northwestern Medicine Transplant Coordinator. Um, the phone number is 312 695-0828 when you call to uh, nominate yourself as a donor for uh, Dr. Rittner um, she will ask or they will ask for Dr. Rittner's birthday and you need to make sure and mention that it's May 5th 1953 um, anyway let's do all we can to get Dr. Rittner a kidney we're so grateful to RFM and everyone who's made this uh, series possible please spread the word please tell everyone please comment on the podcast comment at YouTube, comment on the Mormon Stories podcast page. Um, please share it with everyone you know. Something that I would really love from all our listeners is if you would um, if you would write down time codes of uh, any excerpts that you really loved from the interview, what I would love to do, because this is so many hours, I would love to create snippets or a smaller segments from three to 10 minute segments that we can use to share on YouTube in a more consumable way. YouTube likes short videos. And basically, honestly, people who are trying to learn about these sorts of things prefer shorter videos. But I don't have time to go back and rewatch and listen to the whole thing and uh, write out the time codes for the excerpts that we could create to help uh, educate people about, you know, about the most important gems uh, coming from this podcast. So if any of you are able or willing to do that, Please email me at mormonstories at gmail.com, message me on Facebook, provide the time codes for the snippets, and we'll break them up into much smaller videos and use them to help educate the world. Uh, please help us with that. If you're able, um, please spread the word and, um, and please keep supporting us on Mormon Stories Podcast. We could not do this without your support, so we thank you for the support. Please give us any feedback or questions. Again, uh, the interview is Dr. Robert Ridner, an expert Egyptologist, translates the Book of um, Book of Abraham. It's available both on Mormon Stories Podcast and Radio Free Mormon. We love you guys. We appreciate it. Really quick, we've got some comments. Um, Masaj uh, says, I really enjoyed the whole series. I've been listening to it in episodes while walking to work. So glad um, you've enjoyed it, Masaj. I don't know how to pronounce your name, so please help me with that. Meg writes, it's such an excellent series. Uh, thank you for the time you spent. Thanks, Meg. Glad you enjoyed it. Nathan writes, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Nathan. Um, Douglas writes, solid series. Working my way through part three now. It's five plus hours, Douglas, so good luck with that. Um, uh, Clark says, still need to watch uh, number three. The first two were mind-blowing. That's right, Clark. They are mind-blowing. Um, Clark talks about moving the goalposts. That's right. Uh, Neo-apologists and Mormon apologists are moving the, the, the goalposts and it's disingenuous and it's gaslighting in the membership. Um, uh, Nicole writes, I've got 20 minutes left of the first episode with Dr. Rittner. Uh, talk about uh, mind-blowing John. Uh, she says she thanks me for my work. Um, and she agrees we need to help find Dr. Rittner a kidney. I agree with you, Nicole. 
Katie says, very excited for the series. I find it so interesting so far. Thank you for making this happen and for all your hard work. You're welcome, Katie. Um, Cynthia is joining us from South Australia. Clark says, highly, highly, highly recommend watching on YouTube so you can see the hieroglyphs. I had to stop listening to the podcast so I could see what they were talking about. I agree, Clark. It's 50 times more valuable if you can watch the images as we discuss them. Brendan writes, easily my favorite interview series of all the Mormon stories to date. That's over 1,300 hours of interviews. Brendan says it's been his favorite. He says, total scholar, irrefutable evidence that Joseph Smith did not have the power from God to do anything, let alone translate ancient texts. Um, Safelele uh, is tuning in from South Korea. I wish I could pronounce your name. Um, Nathan writes, thank you for all your hard work. Not all superheroes wear capes. Dr. Rittner and RFM certainly are superheroes. Al writes, Dr. Rittner is awesome. I totally agree. Mache tell tells, tells us how to pronounce his name. It's Mache. Um, Jerem writes, uh, hello from Brazil. You're doing a great job. Uh, thank you so much, Jerem. Vicky from Scotland, hello. Sue loves these episodes. Christina. Uh, Kirsty says this is so important. Clay writes, any way to post to YouTube under another poster ID for those in the cult who won't watch Mormon stories? Uh, Clay, maybe we can find a way to uh, release Mormon stories episodes in a different format. I don't know how, but I'm happy to entertain that. Email me at mormonstories at gmail.com or message me on Facebook. And then Sue writes, all of these episodes were excellent. Thank you for all your long hours and hard work. All right. So uh, that's all we have for today. We have much more in store on Mormon Stories in the weeks, months, and years ahead. Martine writes, planning on watching a second time. So much to absorb. Martine, I love you. I know who you are. You're a dear friend. And thanks for tuning in. Anyway, spread the word. Thanks for all your support. And uh, please tune in again soon for more episodes of Mormon Stories podcast. Take care, everybody. And uh, please give us feedback and please support us at mormonstories.org with your donations. Uh, a, week, a monthly donation of 10 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month, uh, whatever you can afford will allow us to keep doing this work. Thanks, everybody. Take care. And a huge thanks to Dr. Rittner and RFM and all of the amazing people in this community. Uh, please give us your feedback and uh, we'll see you guys again soon on Mormon Stories Podcast. Take care, everybody. <laughs>